Uh, this guy is called the Standing Streamer. <laughs> Wrestling with regret, and you're watching putting you over. <laughs> I can must have hear it. I hear it on your end now. I know. I'm trying to mute it so I can have it on like Twitch. I'll just turn my phone down. Look at that. Sounds echo. That's awesome. Oh, good for That's you. Good um, that voice. So, this. so we're gonna have Holden Albright at the top of the hour. Thanks to D Rod for coming on, giving his us his insight on NXT and all that fun stuff. Hello, everyone. Wolf Hello. of Wall Street. Um, all right, let's go over to the scene. Put you over. Boom. Oh, all right. Let me introduce. Hi, uh, Holden. My name is the Standing Streamer. This is putting you over. The voice you hear in the background is my producer Vanessa. You guys can introduce yourselves. I'm going to go over and get your uh, Twitter link fixed because we have D-Rod's stupid Twitter link and nobody likes D-Rod. <laughs> it was a very interesting first hour. <laughs> oh, look at you. You're so Canadian with your Timmy's cap. I love it. Hell yeah, black coffee. I, I just woke up before I go to work, so I uh, definitely need some sort of energy. Oh, wait. Wait, you go drink. to work. You work night shift. Uh, yeah, I basically work like one to ten a.m. Monday to Friday. Holy crow! I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I, I don't know what that's been for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Now, you. Uh, I'm gonna get my energy drink, which is another cold, uh, Mance Warner approved uh, daddy soda, but um. You got a Coors Light there? <laughs> no, I got a Rolling Rock. Oh, I don't think that's Man's Warner approved. No, it. Well, it it is. We're you gonna need a Natty Light. Yeah, we're gonna edit that and post. <laughs> said Natty Light. <laughs> um, but you said okay. So you got coffee. We're talking about energy drinks now. It, is it? Do I have this right? You drank <laughs> twenty-one energy drinks in one day. No, so there was so I'm a white monster guy for yeah, energy drinks. Monster, Fans even bring them to me at shows, so it's awesome. But uh, there was one weekend, I think it was October 2015, that from Friday at 1 a.m. until Monday at 12 p.m. I did the math and I had 21 energy drinks, oh slept for four hours, not in a row, and ate two times. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then I had this weird heart problem that I yeah. didn't realize. Was, you think? I thought it. I thought it was a shoulder issue. My heart radiated so much that I felt the pain in my back on my shoulder blade. Oh. So uh, I took a little break for a month. Are you still drinking those? Uh, right now, not so much because without wrestling, I don't need oh, yeah. that energy so much. But a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. Yeah, me too. I drink. I probably drink too much coffee. Vanessa, you probably have a lot of coffee, right? Uh, way too much. Way too much. Now, I was just talking to Vanessa before we, we had you on. You're from Brampton, Ontario, Canada, correct? I'm not a correct. Canadian guy. Uh, 
and so I've lo- I'm learning so much. I've I've had uh this is now the th- the third Canadian wrestler we've had on, I believe. You, Tyson Dukes, and uh, Tyler Turva, I believe those are great all- company. Yeah, so I I'm learning a lot about the land of Canada. <laughs> But my my main thing is like there's three there's three words so it's Brampton, Ontario, well I guess it would be like Knoxville, Tennessee, United States. So forget yeah. forget I said that at all. But <laughs> yeah, we're not too self indulgent on the uh, no. the country part. Like we don't ignore that part. We're proud of it. Like like when someone says Ontario, they know it's Canada. You don't have to say it. You know it. Unless you're in California. Unless you're in California. Yeah. Well, which know. really screws stuff up because that is also Ontario, comma CA, which CA would also be Canada. That's true. There is an Ontario. Yeah, that's right. There is. You know, I got confused because I was doing some research on you, and the guy who was doing a podcast with you, I can't remember his name. I, I listened to a couple, so I apologize to all those people. One of the people I was listening to, though, I think is a friend of yours because the camaraderie uh, back and forth was great. I want to say Myers. Brad Myers. Yeah. yeah that's he's what it was. one of my best friends. Oh, okay, cool. That I could definitely tell. Uh, I, I apologize to the other guy that I don't know his name, but, uh, was some, it probably Spencer. I don't, I don't know. The guy said he was going to a, a comic con in London. Yes. Mm, okay. That's what he said. And I'm like, why oh, is... it was Lewis then. It I'm was like, definitely Lewis. I'm like, why is he talking about London with a Canadian <laughs> wrestler? Like, what the hell is going on? And then I realized yep. that there's a, a London, Ontario, Canada. Yep. You think I would know this? There's probably been some pay-per-views there before. You think I would have realized this? Oh, no. We don't uh, We don't acknowledge London. I didn't even know it was a part of Ontario, let alone Canada, until like eight years ago. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Is hey, that... I'm from I'm from 20 minutes north of Toronto. Like the GTA is Canada for a lot of people, and for me, it was very much the same until pro wrestling, where I get to visit all these small towns and make new memories in the places like Sarnia and Barrie. Barrie, Barrie Rest. Now, before we get to how much you travel around Canada for independent wrestling, you said GTA, and yes. I know that you either do or used to do a podcast called GTA <laughs> something, but what's GTA mean? Cause it must not be the video game, right? It's no, it's uh, the greater Toronto area. The so greater like the Toronto greater Boston area. area, stuff like ah, that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> GBA by city, the greater Boston. Dude, area. I, I wanted to live in Boston just because the initials would have been uh, Game Boy Advance. Like, Game Boy Advance, yeah. That's what yes. I was just thinking. All right, so um, independent wrestler. Now, y- you uh, when did you get started? Wait, no, no, no. Let me start over. Sorry about that. What is your first <laughs> wrestling memory? Uh, I like, I, I remember always watching as a kid, I'm literally looking over at a stone cold poster on my wall right now. And it's, it was always there, but it's just like King of the ring 98. I remember that VHS tape yep. and then the DX VHS tape cause stone cold said so and Austin 316 uncensored, which I was never allowed to watch South park, <laughs> but I could watch the attitude era yeah, and like stone right? cold was way worse than South park. <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, I just heard, I, I think I just heard today on uh, Busted Open, Tony Khan of AEW said he got a whole inspiration from South Park in their whole wrestling episode. So Yeah, for the Daily's Place uh, yeah. setup. Yeah, right? It's, it's so weird. Big circle. Um, So your first wrestling memory, your big Attitude Era guy, Love Stone Cold, 98 yeah. King of the Ring. Remember all that. When's it, when's it a light bulb go off in your head and click? Like, the, uh, were you athletic in school? Were you? Did you play sports? So I'm a bigger dude, but yep. I'm half Italian, and I played soccer a lot as a kid. So oh, like, I got awesome. pretty good legs. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure like if I have a child, they're going into sports immediately because no matter how unhealthy you are, as long as you have that steady base. Yep. Like you, you're the standing podcaster. That's your gimmick, as I just heard on the yep. previous portion of the show. Yeah. It's that whole, as long as you have that sturdy base, anything else will come naturally over time where if you never played sports as a kid, 
it never comes up. But yeah, it was, I, I was watching a breakfast uh, television morning show and they showed a wrestling school that happened to be in Brampton. And I went there for two classes when I was in grade seven. Wow. And then I was just like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Dude, it, it was the best. Like, and like, unfortunately, uh, my parents lied to me and said my grades weren't good. They just didn't want to pay for the training. Oh, you and then a trip. Yeah, it uh, a trip fell through in 2014. I started training in February because I had this money and I knew about this school. So I was like, yeah, I'll go to Squared Circle. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say next. So Squared Circle Training, that's where you got started. Um, I believe if I've did, done my research correctly, you were there about six months before it closed. Yeah, I want to say like I started at the end of February. They closed at the end of August, but like between family issues coming up and just not having the dedication yet, I was probably there like in that six months, maybe two and a half, three. Why, why do you think you didn't have the dedication then? It was like, I never joined the wrestling school to be like, well, I never wanted to main event WrestleMania. I just wanted to be a wrestler and it was a fun fitness thing to do. And where I was in my life, I was drinking a lot. I was like 21 Yeah, right. and and I was just like having fun. I was doing this on the side. And then once it closed, I was like, oh, I was actually enjoying this. And like for that last month, I actually got like in a groove. And then I found Crossbody Pro Wrestling open up in Kitchener. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to travel an hour and a half, three times a week to train. Who trained you over there at Crossbody? Uh, at Crossbody, it is Chris Tidwell, the Notorious TID, and Big Ben Ortmans. The Notorious TID, I like that. He's like the stereotypical like biker dude, six foot five, just thick, bunch of tattoos, terrifying individual, but also the sweetest man <laughs> ever. And like he fosters like fifteen to twenty two small dogs at the same time. Like he is genuinely a great dude, but also. He has a knife on him at all times. <laughs> he's a, he has a heart of gold. Yeah, heart of gold. But like to get to that treasure chest, legitimately a knife. At <laughs> yeah, all right. Times. Oh man! All right. So uh, I lost my notes. Where was I? Um. So you went from the squared circle training. You weren't that into it. Then into cross body, where where now you're into it. You're. Yeah, I think you stepped into the ring first time in 2015. Um, yes. But f so, at did let's see, how do you go from going out to get ketchup to then later in, <laughs> <laughs> to then later in the night debuting in the ring? Like usually when I go to get ketchup, I don't come back to a singles match. So <laughs> how does that pan out? <laughs> Oh my God. So uh, after Crossbody, two of my trainers from Squared Circle, Chris Chambers and Ashley Six, they opened up a new school and promotion called Super Kick. Ah. And they were closer. I had a good uh, relationship with them. I was still talking to Ash like weekly. And he was even like, yeah, you're in Kitchener for now until we open up our school. Because they were running shows for about four months before they opened up. And then I transferred over. I'm one of the few people that I went to multiple different wrestling schools, but not because I got kicked out. It's just, I'm going to grow over here, keep a good relationship, don't burn any bridges. Right. And then I go to Superkick, we're training. November comes around, they're going to have a rumble. So a lot of that rumble, because most indie rumbles are like eight to 10 people. They were doing a legitimate 20 plus oh my Lord. people. So, and it's like two minute entrances between people. Like it's legitimately a Royal Rumble, which is cool because it's not done that often. And a lot of their roster was going to be students that were either ready for matches or just to be ready. And it literally, there was, I think EC3 was on that show. And uh, I did his seminar, my bag's down by the ring, and I was just asked, hey, we need to go grab condiments. Because I'm still the same dude where I'll pick guys up at the airport. Yeah, I will grab things that need to be done. They say pay your dues, but it's just like, hey, let's all help this show run as smoothly as possible and don't be lazy, which a lot of wrestlers don't have vehicles, especially trainees. It's ridiculous. Wow. Why not? Why, what do you, why do you think that is? I, 
I think like a lot of them just like a lot of things in life. I don't know. Maybe it's just my generation of people that are very much. Oh, I don't need to get my license or a car where I'm like, I don't want to be home. I need to escape here. <laughs> but uh, it was I go grab condiments and I come back and it was actually Mark Wheeler, who was a month into training at this point. And he's like, hey, you have a match. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm in the Rumble later on. It's like, no, you have a free show <laughs> match. And the door is just open for VIP. Are you holding and the ketchup like, packets? <laughs> I think I put them down, but I'm in gym shorts and gym shorts, running shoes, and like a hoodie. And he's like, no, you're wrestling a guy. Uh, Air, uh, and I was like, wait, Eric Kearney, Easy e He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, I got to go get this. Uh, I got to go. Where's my gear bag that was left from the summer? I was like, oh, we put it behind the curtain. And I ended up getting dressed right behind the curtain. And it wasn't like a stage curtain. It was the... <laughs> pillars and drapes <laughs> like a shower curtain and what happened legitimately like <laughs> if that stage fell over my dick and balls would just be in front of this room of 40 vip people right now <laughs> like it's ridiculous and i call the match with eric we go out there we have it and i was like whoa and afterwards when we're tearing down the ring we bring it back to the training school which was a couple blocks away and i get told congratulations you got your green light and the weird thing is, I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> the, two trainees, the two trainees before me that got their green light, they weren't really traveling as much as I was. Because in that year and a half of training, I was going to like at least one to five shows each weekend wow. just to help out. Because I love pro wrestling. I just want to watch it as much as I can. And that helped me develop relationships early on, too, with more yeah. experienced people because I would drive them or I would just be at shows constantly and just, I do magic tricks every now and then. So that got a little bit of a uh, oh, yeah? from them. Yeah. And pardon. I was going to say, what, what magic tricks can you do? Uh, uh, it's like basic card tricks. Like, here's the thing. It's, I'm not a good magician, but I'm a good performer. Yeah. So the sleight of hand, not that great. Like I, if I palmed a playing card, you will know I have a playing card in my hand. But if I palmed an orange, I'm just so confident and lying that you wouldn't know there's an orange there. And then I'll like pass you a cup and the orange will just appear inside it. Nice. And it's this weird like confidence thing where it's like, oh, I'm not confident in the skill, but I'm confident in my performance. So I was able to develop those relationships. And then I got my green line. I was like, I don't know what this means because the other two haven't gone anywhere. And literally the next weekend I wrestled twice. Wow. We, we had someone else on the show uh, not too long ago that said they did the same thing. They just, they went to like shows and independent shows and just hung out and just met people yeah. and, and, and made connections and did whatever. Uh, I feel bad. I don't remember who it was, but, but yeah, that's interesting to hear. The magic tricks are the best too. I definitely, well, that's the thing. It's, it's just, it breaks the ice. You're at dinner after a show or you're yeah. just hanging out. Hey, here's a deck of cards. And it's, better than just the same someone bitching and moaning about their girlfriend or baby mama drama yeah no one needs to hear that yeah I'm like oh no i'll make this card appear in your pocket instead <laughs> or this orange behind your ear yeah yeah <laughs> um were there any uh challenges that you faced uh in training in these initial years of you uh being in the ring all the time uh, the, you know I, any go ahead i think it was I think it was more of a like confidence issue and like a self-esteem and like I'm a bigger dude and I knew everything when because I'll see it now with some younger guys in training and I was always trained do it right or don't do it at all and right. there's people that if we're doing a proper drill or doing a front roll it's there's people that won't do it properly and they'll get frustrated that they have to do it again as opposed to you shouldn't be frustrated that your trainer is asking you to do this again. You should be frustrated with yourself for not being able to get it. Yeah. And just be like, I have to get this. I want to, I want to do better. And that was always my thing where it's, I, cause I had no ideas of grandeur of success in pro wrestling. Like even the minimal success I have now, I'm like, I didn't envision <laughs> any of this. So it's so weird. But then I'm, I was just like, Oh, I want to learn how to put together a match. Oh, I wanted to just wrestle. And then that first year, I I grinded so much. I was drinking too many energy drinks. I wasn't sleeping. And I I think the first big roadblock was like a year and a month in. 
I wanted to quit wrestling just because even people were saying I was gray. My skin pigmentation was literally gray. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating properly. Just going too and it hard. led to kind of, yeah, and it led to kind of a shitty attitude just from other people be like, oh, he looks grumpy, where I'm just like, I don't want to fall asleep while driving home tonight. <laughs> How'd you get out of that slump? It was literally, I, I canceled like three bookings. It was the beginning of December. I I messaged a bunch of people saying, wrestling was fun. Glad I got <laughs> to meet you. Hope I, hope we could stay friends. And one of the people, Big Ben Ortman is one of my trainers because they started running shows he didn't get the message and then i see the match graphic go up for the next show in january oh man and i'm like ah, i've had i've had like three weeks off maybe i'll have this match as like my goodbye match and that mental refresh of taking a month off not going to training not going to shows that match was so much fun and watch it i haven't watched it back yet but i'm pretty sure the match was terrible because it's four young guys not knowing how to do a tag match <laughs> but it was just fun i was in there with my best friend mark wheeler and then we just started doing this tag team thing where we were called the Riot Makers. We started wrestling everywhere. And I didn't give a shit. So, like, anything that I'd be like, oh, a vet will get angry at this. Screw yeah, it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's see what happens. Let's see. And literally that whole handcuffs off of, oh, no, will I get blackballed or black? I'm like, I don't care as long as I'm having fun and not hurting anyone. And that happened. And then it led to a snowball of success. And then a year into that because our careers were going in different directions and we had four members of our group at that point. We're like, okay, trying to commit to tag bookings is getting real difficult for us. Yep. So why don't we break it off? We figured out storylines places and then it just became, Oh, well, I'm, I'm not quitting wrestling. I'm stopping this team thing. Okay. I need to find what Holden Albright is now. And it's such a clearer mindset now and having fun and just having good matches. <laughs> That's perfect. It's a great transition too, because I my next uh, quite what well, the tag thing. I it's very interesting uh, how you said it, it's hard to do the bookings w being in a tag team because you had said somewhere like when you're a singles wrestler, it, you, any time of the night, any time of the yep. day, you could take your phone, go out, cut a promo on anyone you want. You don't have yep. to book your tag team partner. You don't have to do anything. And it's just like content like this. And, and that made that made perfect sense to me. I was like, wow, never looked at it that way. But speaking of Holden Albright, uh, you, you're, you've now come into your character. You, you, you've got, you know, your snowball of success. You, you broke off the tag team, the Riot Makers. Uh, for the people that are out there in, in Twitch land tonight or, or anyone we push this out to YouTube or any of the podcast forums, uh, who is Holden Albright? How would you describe yourself? Holden Albright is a professional wrestler and an amateur criminal. Ooh, amateur criminal. I say can't be a I professional. Say amateur. No, because amateur criminal means that there's no uh, record of proof ah, that I've done anything that point. I say I have. That's a good point. So I I cut a promo in the first crossbody show because they were recording it where, hey, everyone get here super early. We're gonna record like almost studio style like you know the wwe documentary yep. interviews yeah where they just sit people in a room for two hours and ask them a bunch of questions so they can just weave into whatever show they want to put it on so it's okay everyone get here two hours three hours before bell time we're gonna sit everyone down ask you some questions and then it led to them posting on their youtube channel our interviews and then the match so like it was this weird little promo thing that was awesome and I, I was asked the very first show, I'm a year into doing shows, and I was asked, what's your goal in wrestling? And I, my goal was to have a match. Like, the worst thing to happen to someone is achieving your goals because then you need to reevaluate stuff. Right. You got you to re rethink them. Yeah. And I just, I remember Johnny Curtis, Fandango on uh, Cole Cabana's podcast just mentioned how. He used to record Monday Night Raws on VHS tapes, and I used to do the same thing. So he's like, every time I'm on WWE, I'm now in the record books. Like, no one can forget who I am because there's WWE encyclopedias. Yep. There's a network now. So I, I took that, and I went, I want to be remembered. And I, at that point, thought it was championships, victories, etc. But now, five years later, I say, Holden Albright wants to be remembered. 
but it's not victories or championships. It's in the nightmares of my <laughs> opponents. When you look down at your arm and you see a scar, or you wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night, or you wake up in a hospital room to your family and loved ones, just remember Holden Albright put you there. And uh, your your character right now definitely gives out that uh, nightmarish vibe with, with the yes. mask, you the masks that you wear to the ring on your entrances. His name is Walter. His <laughs> name is Walter. He has his own name. Is it there now? Uh, he's in the side room because the last promo I did in March, I I started doing open gauntlet matches because yep. there's a bunch of promotions in Hamilton and there's a wrestling school there. There's a bunch of trainees. And none of them are really hungry enough because everything's coming to them where it's like, oh, there's there's an awesome promotion there, Alpha One Wrestling, that I wrestle yep. for. And people work really hard to get on those shows. If you're just lazy or expect everything, let alone anything, you're not going to work hard. So I, because I've been traveling around, I've been seeing a lot of younger guys. I talked to the promoter and I was like, hey, can I start doing like an open challenge gauntlet just to challenge myself to have three matches? And every indie promoter, anyone listening to this, just think that when a show's coming up and you Oh, fans, good for uh, you! The promoters are yelling at all of them about, guys, we need to cut more promos. Guys, we need more videos for this. So I said, hey, I put Jimbo Jones and Ridley already. I asked them beforehand because you do need to make sure you actually have people yeah. that will accept the challenge. And I was like, that third spot, pick anyone. I don't care. But I did a legitimate open challenge. I cut my video promo challenging anyone to step up. And then legitimately on that show, that that match alone got 13 promos from people actually wanting to wrestle me. Because it's whenever I wrestle, I'm not one of the guys that's like, oh, well, you've only been wrestling for two minutes. Much like the Marco stunt yeah. conversation earlier. It's like, like, no, if we work hard, the fans will see it. And they won't know you've been wrestling for two weeks. They won't know I've been wrestling for six years. They just know they just saw a good wrestling match. And that's all I care about. Yeah. So getting able to do that. But going back to it, the promo that I put up, I have a photo of Ridley, Jimbo Jones, and I'm forgetting the third kid's name because I've only met him once. <laughs> and I know his real name, but I think his gimmick name might be Herbie. But I have photos of them on my wall next to Walter and a Mankind mask <laughs> and a chain. And it's in a bedroom that there's renovations going on in my house right now. So yeah. I had to like move into the spare bedroom. So every night I look over and I see three photos of uh, white dudes from the area and then my giant wolf mask just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever thought of, of wearing the mask the entire match? Like while you wrestle? Like could, I mean, could you? So do you know who Black Taurus is? No. So he's uh, he's a AAA guy that in the last couple of years popped up at PWG, did a little stuff for Impact. And he has this giant bull mask on that's just Oh, awesome. maybe I do. Maybe I do. Probably when you see him, you'll be like, okay, I remember this dude. And like I see his mask and I'm like, I definitely want to get a copy of that. But I just got real lucky because I used to have a bunny mask and then I got drunk at a convention <laughs> and I dropped it actually outside of Tim Hortons and I dropped it and it broke. And I was like, oh no, I need to get a new mask for my gimmick. <laughs> and I got this wolf mask that's way better than that one, but it's just so big yeah. and it's half plastic. Oh. So it will, like, I've had seven versions of the ma that mask. I have two real good copies right now because I can't find any more <laughs> versions of it. And it's literally different parts of it, like a tooth will break off or inside the plastic will break, which sometimes legitimately will cut me before <laughs> a match even starts. And it's just one of those things where I can do a couple things. I can do an exploder suplex, lariats, whatever, but I can't do a whole match with that yeah. mask on. And I also don't want to damage it because it costs me 70 bucks per mask. Yeah, you'd have to get, because it's a big mask. Yeah. You'd have to get something uh, more aerodynamic, I think, to go through an entire match. 100%. Can I just say I popped when you said bunny because I immediately went to Donnie Darko in my head. Yeah, right. And That's I was what I'm creeped thinking. out. <laughs> a, a lot of people compare that. A lot of people compare it to Donnie Darko, which I don't hate. I love that movie. Yeah. That's a. Uh... That's the vibe I got when I, I watched some of the matches, some of the entrances. 
That's definitely the vibe I got. I mean, the mask is bigger, but that's what I took away from it. It's definitely nightmarish for sure. Uh, I have three daughters. What's, what's funny is like kids love it or they're terrified of it. Like in the same weekend, I yeah. will because I'm very much a stone cold dude. I'll wrestle the same way. It's just like, am I getting beat up for most of the match or not? And there's one photo I recently shared from uh, Canada Day a couple years ago where I just look. I also will just stare at children and that will make them uncomfortable. <laughs> where it's on the Friday, I was a bad guy. So I just like looked at this kid and he didn't know I was behind him. So there's a photo of me just staring from behind him. Yeah. And then the next photo is him running. He's already like 10 feet away in the two photos. It's like a clown. And the next day it's me. Yeah. And the next day it's me just putting my fist up like a Nido or something. And this little kid (laughs) giving me a fist bump back. It's like nothing changed except acknowledging instead of terrifying. Um. Yeah, what was I? What was I saying? Like, uh, like, like my kids. My kids are into wrestling, but if I showed them, I have three daughters. If I showed them uh, your entrance with that with that wolf mask, or even the bunny mask, uh, yeah, that I I know exactly which one of them would be scared to go to bed at night, <laughs> and which one of them would be like, oh yeah, who the hell is that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of them's giving you a New Japan stiff kick to the shins and the other ones Ooh. running away but um <laughs> as far as holding style in the ring uh you you talked about attitude era you've mentioned some other things uh is your is your style is your in ring work inspired by anyone uh i would say i learned a lot from josh alexander uh, oh, in the past yeah. few years and he was some dude uh some guy that i looked up to before and respected and I've been luckily, luckily enough to become a friend of his and someone that he will guide and like watch my matches back. And I, I have a weird style where he's very technical, yep. strong style yep. where it's, I have that base. I can chain wrestle, but also I've now in the past six months, cause I've consciously been thinking of my style and how I want to pace matches. If I have, cause I've had the benefit for the last year and a half to wrestle at least twice a month between 20 to 60 minute matches wow and and not a lot of people get that they get 8 to 12 usually and i've gotten the benefit of having an iron man match against josh or having 30 minute main event matches and so i if if my match is going to last long we're going to chain wrestle around we're going to have some whatever i'm going to be vicious but also if we have 12 minutes we're probably going to (laughs) start off real hot and aggressive and then go into slowing down and that's just my the whole pro wrestler amateur criminal goes you agreed to be in the ring with me that means i have all the time in the world you consented to the pain you're about to receive i'm not saying i won't get hit i'm just saying i'll like the pain a lot more than you um josh alexander impact tag team champion yep big match coming up here at slammiversary now you you've actually wrestled uh under the impact banner uh, yes, for, I've had one match for that. Stone for Mr. Stone Rockwell, right? <laughs> bad, bad intentions. What what was that feeling like to like to enter into it thinking a regular, you know, independent singles match and and then when you stop and think about it, no, it's it, you're under the impact banner. It's literally how you how you describe that. It's how my day went, where it's because <laughs> Impact partnered with Destiny, yep. yeah, and Destiny, the yeah. Destiny promoter messaged me. It's like, hey, are you down to wrestle Stone Rockwell? And I'm like, yeah, I'm available that day. I'm down. I'm one of the few people. I will wrestle everyone and anyone. I don't care because that's how you get better. You challenge yourself against better people. You challenge yourself against lesser experienced people. And it was like, yeah, okay. And then they're setting up the ring and stuff. I cut my promo for it. Uh, and I'm just sitting at the merch table before the doors open and they're putting the impact. I don't know if the aprons were on the ring yet or if they were putting them, but I was sitting at the merch table next to uh, Josh and Michael Elgin. And I just like looked at them at one point or <laughs> one of them mentioned to me, it's like, are you okay? And I just spaced out for a second. I'm like, Oh, Oh shit. It just got real. Like I'm looking at that impact apron. I'm like, this isn't a destiny show. This is an <laughs> impact show. Okay. And I already called my match or whatever. And I wrestled the same way, no matter what. And it was just that moment of like, yeah. Oh, 
wait a minute. I, I had no actual goals in wrestling, and now I'm wrestling for, at the time, the probably the number two or number three promotion in the U.S. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, oh, oh, crap. Is this feeling amazing? Which, by the way, watch that show on Impact Plus. Uh, Don Callis and Scott Demore, which is a crazy thing, too, that they were also commentating on it. And uh, Callis asked me afterwards, oh, you're real stiff there, aren't you? And I'm like, no, sir, just snug. And even my opponent was like, yeah, the kid's all right. <laughs> but that main event of that show was Josh Alexander versus Sammy Callahan in nice. a cage match. Ooh. And jo Josh took a garbage can to his head and just hard way bled out like Eddie Guerrero at Judgment. Oh, my God. Like, it's just – and you can literally see George is um, the promoter of Destiny. He's yelling from the side of the cage to trying to get Harry, the referee, to stop the match, to call it early. And everyone in the ring is just like, we can't hear you. We don't know what you're saying. And Josh <laughs> still does a moonsault off the top of the cage. Like, I'm watching it. And, like, to be honest, I thought it was, like, okay, the blood wasn't 100% legitimate. Yeah. And then after the match, I'm packing up my merch. I'm just hanging out. And Jody Threat comes over. And she's like, hey, Josh needs you to take him to the hospital. Oh, that's right. I'm like, wait what <laughs> and i go into the change room and someone wrapped like a very basic head wrap around his head and it's just like oh yeah he's bleeding out for real oh. and it wasn't on purpose it's literally the trash a trash can yeah. is aluminum that will stab you if you've oh. ever like crushed a coke can and yeah. accidentally poked yourself with that imagine that but on your head with a giant trash can and i was like oh my god so i take him i'm just talking to him and it was like, there was a couple of real moments in that conversation that gave me confidence in myself because I just wrestled Josh two weeks before yep. then a 30 minute match. And I was just like, oh, okay, this got the ball going into me actually having confidence in myself to work actually hard and go, oh, I'm not a bad wrestler. And unfortunately, I needed other people to tell me that. <laughs> people I like to. me. That's the thing where it's like, I don't like me. No one likes me. It's like, no, a lot of people like you. I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was, that was, so that was bad intentions. You said Impact Plus. What year was that? That was August 2018. 2018. Okay, cool. In case anyone wants to go back and watch that. Um, well, you have Callahan and Josh in the same ring this weekend, so it's going to be crazy. That's true. July, uh, or not July. This weekend. Yeah, what is this? It is July. Fuck. <laughs> it's July. Shit. <laughs> the last five months have been a blur. I I drink too much. I tell you that much. It's stupid COVID. <laughs> Hence the glasses. Hey, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> two nights ago, and Vanessa can can speak up on this. Uh, no, not two, not two nights ago, but two I shows ago. Uh, we had RJ City on here, and before great I great guy. Even, yeah, yeah, he's great. All right. Soon as uh, <laughs> soon as we start the fucking show, he's like, is. Hey, is your head crooked? What's wrong with your glasses and your eyes? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're not level. They're... So he cuts like this 20 minute promo on how my yep. face is crooked. And I'm like, so I'm taking my glasses off and I'm, I'm like, well, they're level there. And I put them back on and they're not level here. And he's having a grand old time and I'm realizing my face is deformed. So... <laughs> See, oh, so I, I came to this conclusion also. I have a pair of sunglasses, and I always see my left eyebrow, and yeah. I really thought, like, I broke my nose, like, five times yeah. in my life, or in wrestling, actually. I didn't break it before wrestling. And uh, it was like, oh, is my face crooked? Which, it's just like the lens, or uh, the bars are slightly off on yeah. the side where your ears are, so your face probably isn't crooked. But, like, I definitely thought my face was messed up. Well, well something. Uh, either my ears are wrong. Because if I <laughs> smile or laugh really hard or just smile, like, yeah. one of my cheeks will touch the sunglass bottom and the other will not. But, like, okay, for example, these are prescriptions. So, like, they're not just for shit. Well, they are for show, but I can actually see. These are, like, my real glasses. But they're, they're, st they're still crooked. <laughs> I mean, and they're not, I mean, you know, fuck RJ City. You know what? And clip it. Yeah, someone clip that. Fuck RJ City and his goddamn critique. Nobody critiques him. Look around in his goddamn underwear. Dude. No one wants to critique him because he will talk 20 minutes about how your face is crooked. It's like, it's like talking to your grandmother. 
You never... No, no, no. It's like the ant. It's like the vodka ant that doesn't actually care about your feelings and doesn't give you like a $20 bill on the weekend. Mm. That's who he is. Exactly. Anyways, enough of him. You gave him too much, <laughs> too much uh, stuff tonight. Uh, Backyard Pro. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Before you get into it. So, Vanessa... The voice you hear, my phenomenal Vanessa is awesome, by the way. Do you, yeah, she sure is awesome. Uh, I've snagged her up and grabbed her, not literally, but grabbed her <laughs> figuratively. And hey, had... you're American, I, I, I can only assume, <laughs> yeah, right. But I, I needed, I needed help with this show that I'm trying to put on. I needed help, I just wanted someone to help me. Vanessa has. She's done a phenomenal job helping me produce this show. She brought the likes of you on, Tyson Dukes, Tyler Turva, lots of other people. And so I t- t- talking to her this morning like I haven't prepped at all for the show. I don't know what time it was, 10. She sent something back. She's like, yeah, he, he did this Backyard Pro stuff. And she sends me a link and I start watching it. Now that's some good shit. That's what I like. It's so much fun. Yeah. So why don't you tell me a little about that? How's that get started? So, uh, two of my best friends, Gabriel Fuerza and Von Vertigo. Von Vertigo, uh, that's who it is. Yeah. Uh, Von Vertigo is the Vince McMahon of it all. I say uh, Fuerza is the Bruce Pritchard. And uh, what happened was they were real bored at the beginning of May, I want to say it was. And uh, they ended up having a music video backyard match two and a half minutes long just a fever dream and then i'm watching it and i was like man i really want to do that but i don't live anywhere near any of my wrestling friends are what if i wrestled myself and i filmed like a little promo of uh of me as el gringo xl and then i get jumped by stan sizzle and i'm about to do the match and i ended up filming it later on but it also hurt a lot when you're wrestling yourself and you put a mattress down and you try to jump off of a porch. <laughs> a, you miss the mattress just because that's my luck. And and B, it just doesn't come off well when you're wrestling yourself or a stick with a mannequin head on it. Right. And so I've never posted that yet. And Vaughn, I reached out to Vaughn and Fuerza, showed them the the rough idea of the match I wanted to have. They're like, that's cool. By the way, we're actually going to do a real production. I was like, oh, I ended up wrestling a referee in the area, Jimmy Hellbent. And we just, everyone just had a hell of a good time and enjoyed it. And I can say that there are three more, three more episodes coming up for that. Uh, I I call it volumes or collections. So it's going to be fun. I have no idea what I'm doing in the next one. I don't know which of my characters are coming back or if I'm going to have new characters. I don't know if, there's new people involved because we all also filmed this separately because there was a five person limit of uh, who could be together at that time. So we legitimately, until that show got posted live, we didn't know what was going on on the show. It's like a a Southpaw wrestling. It's like, it's just legitimately, but with like actual wrestling instead of just the promos. Yeah. Never. I know. Right. Never wrestling. They should be doing that. So stuff is now. El Gringo XL? Is that like going to be a new character? Or is that just for fun right now? That's just for fun, and I I think I accidentally got some heat with people for cultural appropriation because oh. for the day yeah. of the second uh, the second uh, episode that went up that featured El Gringo XL, I switched over all my social media to El Gringo XL, and I was only <laughs> I was only posting in Spanish that day, and I was just using like Google Translate. <laughs> It was the same stuff I would say, but I just put in Google Translate, no. and there is a couple of fans that just like went, they just keyboard smashed, thinking that it was Spanish, and I had a private message them being like, "Hey, that's very inappropriate." And then I, I secondhand saw people reference how inappropriate it is when white people do lucha gimmicks and stuff, and I was like, oh my "Well, I think Lord. they're talking about me." And I, I have conversations with people. I don't go off the rails. I don't go screw you screw this but also i'll like text with fuerza where i'm like everyone like d rock earlier mentioning how marco stunt like he's like "Eh," and you compared him to Dudley boys where i didn't even think of that comparison and i was like whoa that's 100 percent true it's wrestling evolves as long as the the story you can tell is believable enough like i wrestled 
I'll wrestle intergender matches all the time. And my defense to it is the first time I wrestled Jody Threat in 2018, both of our first intergender matches, I suplexed her like 20 times. And even in discussing the match, it's like, well, wouldn't you win? It's like, yeah, but I'd have to pin you to win and I want to inflict pain. So if I never try to pin you, I can't win the match. And that's just like the psychology that a lot of people just go, oh, indie guys just want to do spots and stuff. It's like, no, the spots are what gets gifts, but the wrestlers you get invested in, like the Mance Warners, those are the guys that care about stuff and they care. you care about their gimmicks. So that's the story they tell. Yeah. And people didn't fully realize that with El Gringo XL slightly. And I had to like have some conversations, but I, I think like the conversations led to more understanding instead of just like, I hate this because some bitter vet on an RF video shoot interview in 2004 <laughs> while they were high said, all oh, these young guys suck. Wrestling was better in the 70s. Cool. If you like the 70s, go back and watch that. Like, I don't watch weekly WWE TV right now. I'll catch AEW every now and then, NXT. But like the no fans, it's killing me. I've yeah. watched a lot of late 90s ECW and WWF because whatever you love, they're not deleting that from history. Go nope. back and read that. If you don't like the books that are out now, there's been a million years of worth of books. Go back and read those. Mm-hmm. Like they're not deleting. Just because you don't like what's going on now doesn't mean you can't just enjoy the Beatles more because yeah. you don't like two chains. <laughs> yeah, right. If TV sucks there's tv from the past that you're gonna thoroughly enjoy a hundred percent i can't i can't even think of something i've watched recently new television programming or movies because it it all sucks yeah i mean i'll watch i'll watch the warrior again for the 50th time or friday night lights which is one of my favorites not movie give me sopranos give me white collar like i'm down with those like I wrestling consumed me for the last five years that up until the past, like this year, basically, I didn't know what pop culture was. Like (laughs) I would get a meme or whatever's viral six months later. Like I remember big dick energy being a thing, but I didn't realize it until it was like seven months past when it was popular. And I was just like, I'm just focused on wrestling and wrestling is not the most up to date on pop culture references. Thank you, Vince McMahon. (laughs) That's good shit. <laughs> um, now maybe Vanessa can help me on this a little bit, but but I'll 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 dip my toe in this water a little bit. Uh, you smoke weed? Correct. C- correct. Now, uh, I say I say that so bluntly. Um, now pun intended. Pun, pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> yes, I love darn yanks. Oh, I, darn yanks. I, I I love in in t- and I had here's the funny thing. Uh, so I was listening to a podcast and I was like, I think this, I think this guy smokes weed, which is great. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I had to, to contact Vanessa. I was like, is weed legal in Canada? Because I want to make a reference on it, but if it's not, I really don't want to make a reference on it. No, it's legal in Canada. It's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he uses it, he uses it for pain. I was like, okay, cool. So okay. I use it more for mental relief. And, and, and that, to tell you the truth, mental relief and like, just, I guess in the easiest way to say it, relaxing and, and, yep. and shutting your brain off that, that is, that is pain relief for some people. So, 100%. So I totally agree with that. Um, but before we get into the, the serious wrestling aspect of that question, are there any, uh, I got too high stories you would like to share with us? Oh, uh, I don't know any, like, recent ones because, like, it's just, like, whatever. But the first time I ever smoked weed was an experience. Yeah, I bet. So I I started drinking a month before I turned 20. It's 19. It's legal age in Canada. Uh, Besides, there was this one-week span of time in grade 7 or 8 that I had, like, two wine coolers after school every day (laughs) just because I thought they were juiced. And I got told, like, because I somehow stole my sister's wine coolers because she was older than me. It's like, who the hell's drinking this? I'm like, I drink them. They're like, it's alcohol. I'm like, what's alcohol? They taste good. (laughs) They're great. (laughs) No, I'm a Stone Cold fan, so I knew alcohol. I was like, pretty sure I'd become an alcoholic at some point. I love this Bartles and James. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So then what happens, though, it's 
one or two years later, I'm into drinking and like I'm drinking a bunch. It's yeah. manageable. Uh, and then we go to a party where, funnily enough, the dude hosting the party was going to turn 19 in a month. And he asked me to buy alcohol for him. I was like, what do you want? He's like, here's $200. Just get beer. And it led to the point oh where Lord. there, there's no liquor. There's no because I'm more of a vodka and ice guy now. Thank you, Chris Jericho. Uh, <laughs> and it's just very much like you need other stuff besides just beer. Yeah. And it plays into the story. So he was more of a stoner. And I was like, well, tonight's going to be the first night that I get stoned. And to and to add to the hilarity of this being a teenage uh, teenage movie, I also had a broken hand. So I had a Bob Orrin style cast on my left arm. <laughs> it's like a Can't Hardly and, Wait movie or something. Dude, literally. And so we go and the first rule, the first time you ever smoke weed. <sighs> Don't hit a blunt. Don't hit a bong. Yeah. Just maybe have a little bit yeah. off of a pipe. Share a joint. Yeah. So I had the pipe. No edibles. Uh, I had the bong. Oh, no edibles <laughs> at this point. Uh, I, I had the bong. Uh, I had a cross joint. We also had a blunt. So I got real fucked up. Oh. There's one point I tried to go swimming. I can't swim already. I can float. I can not drown, but I can't swim. And what happens is, I think I'm going down a straight line of the pool. Turns out I'm slightly off to the left <laughs> to where I'm, I have a plastic bag over the cast so it doesn't get wet. It's the same thing I would do when I took a shower. Yeah. And I'm going slightly to the left. And then there's one point that I'm just too short for the water. And it's just bobbing up and down like an <laughs> elephant tusk of trying not to drown. So then I'm like, screw this pool. I'm going inside. And, and then I go inside. And oh. out of the corner of my eye, between all the doorways and hallways, I'm just seeing, like, this black thing just run across, oh. like, shadow people. And I'm like, whatever, I might be tired. And then I'm talking to two of my buddies. It's a really tall, skinny black dude and a short black dude. And they go off on the fact that they open up the fridge, and there's beer everywhere <laughs> in this fridge, because we got over $200 worth of yeah, beer right? only. And one of them cuts a promo. And it's funny because this guy's normally real quiet. So him going off was hilarious. And he just goes, these fucking white people, what do they do? They just send their kids to school, beer for breakfast, beer for lunch, beer for dinner. What the hell? And I'm laughing. But the short dude happens to be in front of the window in the kitchen. I'm laughing. Ha ha. And then I just look above his head in, on the window. And in the reflection behind me, because there was a doorway to the dining room, you ever watch The Ring? Yeah. Yeah. So I picture this, like, eight-foot-tall ring-looking thing that has this long black hair, just a cloak, and, like, a skull or, uh, like, a skull for a face. Yep. And I'm staring ahead of me, seeing the reflection behind me, and I'm having the internal dialogue because I'm laughing at what they were saying, and then I just stop talking. And I'm just thinking, okay, I'm pretty sure this isn't real. <laughs> but at the same time, it might be real. <laughs> and they even asked me, they're like, what's up? I'm like, nothing. I'm good. Uh, I'm going to go outside. And I never went back in the house. Like, I even had to jump a fence to go around the house wow. to leave at the end of the night. Wow. And ever since then, most of my weed experiences have not been that bad. <laughs> That's great. That is great. I do, I I cannot remember my first uh, weed experience, but it's nowhere near as awesome as that was. <laughs> it was just too much. It's just like, hey, yeah. don't do all of this. I'm going to do it all. See what happens. Yeah. What but what do we play, white people do? Beer for breakfast. <laughs> beer for lunch. Beer for dinner. Yeah, that's great. It was hilarious. Um, but you you did say you use it to uh you know uh you know. Ease the ease the pain in your mind, I yeah. guess is the way I'll say yeah. it. Uh, do you feel that that could hinder any, um, you know, uh, independent dates in the U.S. at all? The fact that you, I mean, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't hinder RVD at all in impact, but do, right do, now uh, I'm now realizing just how open a lot of people are about yeah. smoking weed. Yeah. And it's one of the things that, especially if I'm open about it, yeah, that means people can pass me stuff a lot more easily that they won't ask. the When they ask the question, do you smoke weed? It's not a general, yes. oh, right. do you smoke weed? It's, I'm pretty sure you smoke weed. And what's funny, it's 
until recently, because I would post on like my Instagram story or something, it's I was never open about it. I was never closed about it. I was just never the guy that it was like a defining characteristic of me. It's even when it wasn't legal, I would smoke a joint outside where people are smoking cigarettes. Like right. I feel like once you hide something, yeah. that's you admitting that it's wrong. Yes. So I I'm agree. like, I've never hit it. And then it's it's funny that now so many people are like, you smoke weed? And I'm like, yeah. And there was actually a show. I never smoke weed before a match or before a show. I'll smoke it afterwards or like on off days usually. But um, there was one day that, it was one of my last shows in March that I wrestled the first match. Uh, it's not intermission yet, but it's right before. I go outside. I smoke a joint. I'm with a couple other people. And then a younger guy comes up to me, and he's like, you, did you smoke dope? I'm like, yeah. And he just goes in this weird, like, trying to mess with me. And I don't want to admit that Evan Greenaway got into me, but he did because I was just high <laughs> enough. So he was like, oh, man, you're a doper. And just, like, he wasn't doing anything malicious. He was trying to fuck with me. But yeah. it fucking worked because I was so high. You are ready. Yeah, but it, then I just keep getting surprised because all my close friends, like, they normally hit me up if they want weed. Yeah. And then there's a, a flurry of people that don't know I smoke weed where I'm just like, yeah, because it's not, hey, I'm a pothead. That's right. my gimmick where it's like, no, I'm a human. Yeah, I agree. I agree. As soon as you hide it, then that has more to say about you than it does yeah me. legitimately yeah. and when you said clearing the thought for like the pain a hundred percent because i i feel like that's a more a social media generation that you can be 15 or 35 just on the internet a lot yeah you'll get in your head because there is a point in time where if i got high and like my phone died i immediately just thought oh this is the moment that I get canceled or everyone hates me. And like, I'm getting eight messages from people being like, what happened? Where it's, that's just me like hallucinating and being very self-conscious where it's, I smoke weed on my break at work now. And it's the only way I can not kill these people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh... I work with some really dumb people, like incredibly. I don't understand how they made it this far. <laughs> how they're still here. Dude, it's, 2020 is bringing out the real like idiocracy in people and it's nice to see that that's not hidden now people are open about their dumb opinions on life it, it's 2020 is fucked up for sure like insane like let's go i'm done i'm done with it well at least you got like you started this podcast and you're productive like i see a bunch of my friends that are either working out harder than ever because they don't have to worry about wrestling right now yeah. So they can actually sleep and grow. Like Mark Wheeler, I mentioned, he gained like 30 pounds of muscle. Wow. He posted a joking tweet saying, I went into this at 187 and I'm currently 215. Wow. And it's just like a lot of people joke like, oh, yeah, I've been eating a lot, too. The dude has literally grown. He's <laughs> wider now than a, than a goddamn doorway. And Can't it's so great to see where. Yeah, yeah legitimately, I'm like. Because I knew he was working out, and, like, you can only see so much through photos and videos. Yep. And then I saw him, and I literally went, holy shit, you're actually wider. And it's because wrestlers don't sleep, especially on an indie schedule where you're wrestling two to four times a weekend. You're training at least twice a week. You have a real job that's supporting this habit, that sleep is what really helps you mentally and physically. And now, so I get to see... My buddy's working out and getting to be their best. But then I also get to see my friends starting podcasts or doing YouTube videos yep. and being creative where I get inspired by people doing stuff. Like if I see someone that's a friend of mine and they're doing a podcast, I'm like, sweet. I reshare everything that my friends do just because it's my way of supporting them. Yep. And it's legitimately my motivation. Like if you don't have people in your life that make you want to be better, I don't think you're surrounding yourself with the right people. Like you, even your children, Yeah. like that has to just, you just look, I'm, I asked one of my buddies who had a newborn. I'm like, do you ever just like look at him sometimes and go, how did this happen? <laughs> like, this is a person and I know what ends up in the Kleenex tissue sometimes. And somehow <laughs> that ended up here. Yeah, right. <laughs> like you just stare, like you actually have a kid. There had to be moments in time where you just yeah. looked at them and went, whoa this is a person which yeah. i don't believe a child's a person until they're 10 for the record i have i have three persons in my house and they're all <laughs> female 
And, oh, oh. And every day I look at him and go, oh, shit. And the youngest one, the youngest one I'll look at, she's three, but I'll, I'll, I'll look at it, look at her and I'll say to myself, fuck, man, I didn't agree to that one. I did not agree to that child. <laughs> I got tricked into that one. <laughs> but, and I did. And that's a, that is, that is a shoot, man. I got tricked. My wife came home. She went out. She just wrapped her legs around you and said, finish, right? I swear to God, it was almost just like that. I, I believe I was streaming just like this. I, I, I don't know whether I was playing FIFA or whatever I was doing. My wife came home. She was at her friend's house. They, they were having drinks and whatnot. She mm -hmm. comes home and she looks at me and she goes, let's go. We're going to make a baby. And I was like, no, we're not. And, and the stream ended. We made two. Look at them. <laughs> the, the stream ended. And fuck, man, I, I got screwed. And literally, and there you go. That's what happened. Can I tell you my idea? So I was going to go to school for film and television production. Nice. And I was pretty sure I was going to work in the porn industry. For <laughs> a year. Yeah. Not performing, but on the production side. Yes. And, and so I came up with, I wanted to do uh, real life parodies of like social media stuff. <laughs> so it's like the updated version of the plumber or the yep. electrician. Yep. But it would be, <laughs> it would be either like a streamer <laughs> that uh, they think their stream is off and then they just start having sex <laughs> or my favorite. That's a little more, a little more detailed that it's, no one there's like YouTube vloggers and they show you their new house yes. and they're giving like a little house tour. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's that it's like a few, <laughs> I can't believe I'm admitting to this like live. But, so it's a female, she's recording herself. Oh, this is the bedroom where the magic happens. <laughs> Sleeping, duh. Puts the camera down, goes, thanks for watching. Puts the camera down. Yeah. It fades to black, but you still hear them. Yeah. And then you, you know, they start doing something and then, the boyfriend grabs the camera and it becomes more of like POV porn. Yep. And it gets to the point where it's like, don't, uh, it's uh, <laughs> like this video. If you want him to finish on my face, <laughs> subscribe if you want me to take it in the ass. And then it's just like her looking at the camera clearly. Well, by the way, I have a firm belief that if a girl wears glasses in porn, she'll probably take it in the face. At the end. <laughs> just cause like, Is it like the her eyes. Mask? Yeah. So then it's this just, like, just went like a full on like <laughs> right hand turn and like. <laughs> I'm like right here, Vanessa. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> I've heard worse, but like holy, like it. The detour on this has been ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, it's a ten year plan. I was pretty sure I was gonna do this video series. <laughs> and I think I may have storyboarded it in one of my notebooks. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, now my cheeks hurt from laughing. <laughs> oh, great. That is phenomenal stuff. I mean, I mean, where, where do I go from here? I'm a very, I'm a very like personable person. That, oh, like, that's phenomenal. I, I, I love it. Shit. Let's just have conversations. Uh, but let's, let, let's pretend to be <laughs> professional. And, yeah, pro wrestling. Woohoo, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> where, <laughs> where, um, where would you like to see Mr. Holden Albright in his point of view porn gimmick? Uh, what, <laughs> what profession? That's Holden All Night, by the way. That's Holden All Night. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> I oh, turn my spark button off! Oh, those asshole daughters! Oh man, holding all night. That you is a just great broke gimmick. streamer. Streamer has broke. That is a <laughs> great gimmick. Oh, holding all night. That's awesome. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where to go. So, so um, yeah. So like. NXT, MLW, AEW, NWA. I def I definitely want to do MLW just because like I was a fan of the podcasting network when it started. Yeah. And then like they're doing such cool stuff and like you can still be independent and do that. Yes. But like to be honest, I'm motivated by a lot of like vengeance or like if someone's like you can't do this, I'm like, 
well, I didn't want to do that, but now I'm going to do it just in spite of you. And I, once again, no ideas of grandeur of like being at WrestleMania or whatever. Yeah. And my real goal is just to film a, or to fill a legacy of anyone from Ontario going forward that is successful, that in 10 years when the Travis Moore or the Evan Greenaways or the Tyler Arrows when they are successful in whatever field they want to do, they go, there was this one guy that helped me out a lot and it was Holden Albright. And I want to be the the guy of like the, what if, like, what if he signed, but also I'm going real hard for the next three years until I'm 31 to get a contract. Cause I know there are some people that don't like me because I became the person where I'm like, Oh, I've been wrestling 10 years longer than you. So this is the way it should be. But they'll also cry in the driveway that (laughs) they don't have a contract because they've been wrestling for so long. And I'm just like, that's not the way it should be. And I asked Josh Alexander, because he started getting the impact stuff and he's been wrestling for like 16 years. There was a two year gap there where he was told he had to retire because of a neck injury. And then he found out the neck injury wasn't as severe as people thought it was. So he came back to wrestling, but he felt super bad because he had a retirement show and he is a good person. Yeah. And, and it's like, no, his buddy, Ethan page, a tag partner said, Oh, you can wrestle. You have to come back then. And he literally needs to be persuaded. And he's one of the best. He's the best wrestler from Canada. And one of the best in the world that when he's given the spotlight, people can't ignore him now. And I asked him, I was like, there's guys like MJF or jungle boy. And like right now you can be under five years in wrestling and become like a WWE guy. Like I don't even think Austin theory is 22 or 23 yet. And it's, I asked him, I was like, do you wish you started in 2010 or 2011 as opposed to 2003? And he's like, no, because my journey is what got me here. And the struggles is, what made him a better person where I see people that have been wrestling for eight years be bitter and just treat people like shit. I'm like the best wrestler is okay with his struggles because he knows at the end of the day, you'll get what you deserve. And so I take that a little bit, go, Hmm, I'm a bit of an asshole. I know the people that blocked me on Twitter or unfriended me on Facebook. And I was like, you know how you can't avoid my name if it's constantly on the posters yeah. of the shows in Ontario, right. if I'm signed. So my goal is no matter where it is, I MLW somewhere I want to wrestle in the next year and a half, but no matter what, in the next two years, I want to have a contract somewhere just to rub it in people's faces that were assholes, but to also show to other people it is possible. I'm, I'm weird like that. I like that. I like. I think that's great motivation. I if if I was in your shoes, that's exactly what would motivate me. Stick it to the people who. You need that me. balance of good intentions, but then also you need that fuel. That if you don't put gas in your car, you're not going to go anywhere. Like, yeah, you have a car, but you can't put gas in it. <laughs> uh, all right. So that was my wrestling question. Now I'm going to steer the car right off the road again uh, before we finish up here. Um, did I you? I did that with the porn. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. Uh, but I wrote this down, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it. Did you list all your streaming subscriptions on your Tinder profile? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think they're still there. Oh, they but should be. I do mention I just want to uh, just smoke weed and talk to uh, people about what we're passionate about passionate about but yes my uh, streaming services are netflix disney plus uh <laughs> wwe network impact plus iwtv and at the time high spot so oh that's great and what's funny though is i posted that at the bottom and besides wwe network and disney plus and netflix nobody pretty got sure no me. one understood what it was <laughs> no one got They're it. like high spots what's that <laughs> iwtv is that an infection what <laughs> Oh, it's great. Oh man. It's been such a great time. Um, but one of the things I like to, to pride myself on with this podcast is I, I don't like to keep anyone over an hour. We've, we, we've gone past that. Uh, we could talk all night for sure. Vanessa, is there anything uh, I missed tonight or anything you want to ask? I'm, I'm still stuck on that right hand turn. Like seriously, guys. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't see it going that way, but I, I like to just go with the flow and <laughs> we were going, yeah. it was great. 
Um, okay, so what I what I do at the end of every show is I'm going to give you a, a imaginary mic. You have it now. You you can cut a promo. You can put yourself over. You can bury someone. You can put someone else over. You can do anything you want. Holding anything. I will not interrupt. Vanessa, you cannot. This is your first one, Vanessa. You cannot interrupt this segment. The floor is yours, my friend. In the next five years, by 2025, I want Ontario indie wrestling to be bigger than the UK scene ever was in the last half decade. And I do believe we have the building blocks for that. And I firmly believe that there's good enough people that we can form that. So anyone looking for new stuff to watch, keep an eye out on Ontario because there's going to be some strong people coming out of this. Like, I wrestled 114 matches last year, oh my and minus Lord. one being in the Maritimes. I consci- consciously chose, I'm going to use Ontario to be my developmental territory. I'm going to just work hard here, did over 100 shows, and to prove that there are that many shows here. And then in February, I started branching off into the States, and it was working. I appeared at AIW, and my goal right now, it's 2025 Ontario Indie Wrestling, will be booming. I want all the young guys in this area to be so good that I don't get booked anymore because they're better than me and slightly cheaper than me. And it forces me to go to Europe. It forces me to go to the States, go to Mexico, because people will be a fan of Ontario Indie Wrestling coming up. And I just want to say special thank you to Vanessa for all of her support. I really appreciate all that support. I appreciate you putting me on your show. And I enjoyed the first hour discussion. And I'm watching that and a lot more wrestling fans be passionate about what you like. You don't need to choose a brand. He was talking about D rock was talking about, I feel guilty that I should only watch one and watch one. The next one. No, if you're bored during commercial breaks, I just don't watch wrestling live because I hate commercials. Demos don't matter. It's about social engagement. If you don't like the Jurassic experience or express, don't talk about them. If you love Keith Lee, only talk about Keith Lee. Stop focusing on what you don't like because there are people that like that. Focus on what you love and promote what you love because that's the only way that people will be more successful in the world. It's you don't don't just focus on the negative because then you're going to become negative as opposed to pro wrestling. It's on television multiple right. nights a week. There's three touring top promotions in in uh, the U.S. There's New Japan. There's wrestling everywhere. There's all these streaming services that you can find on my Tinder profile. Um, that you get to watch all of this. Just enjoy pro wrestling in 2020 as opposed to hating on other people. If you don't like it, don't watch it because there's so much to watch. Excellent. That's what I'll leave people with. <laughs> awesome. That was phenomenal. Holden, it's been a pleasure. I've had a blast. Vanessa, great job. Thank you for introducing me to Holden. Tell your husband the same as well. Just quick. Yes. Holden, do you have a t-shirt site or anything yes. that people can like find you? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I'm real bad with that because I focus on my shirts being cool and unique, so I don't have a new shirt every single week. But if you go to Cross by Pro Wrestling's uh, Pro Wrestling Tees page, there is a special Holden Albright shirt only available there. Excellent. Excellent. Phenomenal. But follow me on like Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. At Holden Pro. <laughs> Holden Pro. And Holden Pro on Instagram, right? Correct. Okay. Because we had your Twitter up and I was plugging it. Um, so Holden Pro on Instagram, on Twitter, Pro Wrestling Tees Crossbody. Holden Pro is there. Thank you very much for coming by, putting you over. What games are you playing right now? On on uh, video games? Yeah. What are you? Because I'm starting to get back into it. I bought God of War and uh, and what's it called? Like I played the Spider Man game and it was so. So much you're fun, so your so. PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Or my Switch also. Okay. I don't. My, my kids. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but. We didn't buy a Switch. We bought this NBA Jam uh, arcade cabinet instead. Oh. Is that one of like the mini arcade machines? Yeah, it's arcade one up. They we... have a Buck Hunter one coming up yeah. that I'm obsessed yeah. with right now. And if you buy it, I, I it, they're they're smaller, but you can buy them with risers that will raise them yeah. up. So we bought NBA Jam. We don't have Switch. The only thing I play for PlayStation Four at the time is MLB The Show. Uh, that's it. At the moment, 
Are you an Xbox or a PC guy? Uh, I have all all the systems. Uh, mainly, I'll play like FIFA. I'll play all my sports games on Xbox. Although this year I am gonna play Madden on PlayStation Four. Uh, and then as far as PC goes, I play like weird games like Rust and weird survival games. As an American, why are you into FIFA? Why? Uh, this is a great story. So, um, well, it's a great. I guess it's great for me. Um. I was never I'm into interested. I was never into FIFA. I was never into soccer. Uh, where I grew up, if you wanted to play soccer or th- liked it at all, uh, they looked down on you because it was only yeah. a girl sport. Um, and then, so my oldest daughter is 11. So at the time she was born, I work in the school system, uh, but I work in a special ed school system. So I'm off. I, I work six weeks in the summer. But I had my daughter in June, so I was off all summer. Oh. And I got lucky that year because I was home and, like, I was, like, you know, the baby sleeps and you got nothing to do yeah. but watch TV. So they had the World Cup that year. Uh, I believe it was mm. Brazil. So I watched soccer all day long in the morning when I was up with the baby. I was like, this is interesting. And then my best friend – uh his name is Brian, uh, Tronic 20 here on Twitch and everywhere else, Tronic 20 TV. Um, he played FIFA 10 and he had a kid and I was always at his house and they had a, a mode on FIFA at that time called pro clubs. And he introduced me to that in between playing that game with him and watching the world cup on TV with my daughter doing nothing else. Mm-hmm. I, became a soccer fan and then i realized the bo- the owners of the boston red sox big baseball fan owned liverpool and i was like oh shit let me watch liverpool <laughs> play soccer and at the time it wasn't so good now it's great mm. uh and and that's the short the you know the, the the short version of how i became a soccer fan like if it wasn't for video games and my kid i i would not like soccer at all and now not only that's do i cool. not only do i watch it but I, like I play it, me and my friend, I his name, well I told you Brian, like we'll go, and like one night a week we'll get with a bunch of other guys who are older, we're over age, we all have kids, we have nothing to do, and we'll go with a cooler of beer and play some soccer, finish up, have a couple beers, leave. Oh man, I thought you were gonna say you tailgate like children's soccer games. Like, no, uh, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun though. No, we go. We'll we'll go play a soccer game, and then when we're all done, everyone will you know will have one or two, and then leave. But yeah, that's how I became a soccer fan. That's awesome. See, I like little stories like that, especially like you can relate it. It's video games. It's your daughter being born, yeah. and it's just like all of this where it's just timing. And like I look at it where no matter where you are in the world, you have your own interesting story because for the most part, you're not gonna like everything you're supposed to like. No. And It's one of the things where, oh, I'm not supposed to like that, so I'm going to ignore it. And, like, I started buying toys again recently just because they're fun. Oh, my God. It's just, like, it's cool. And also, I get to pass them on to my children at some point. I just, my my dad's, like, I'm into it, too. I have LJNs. Ooh, the Masters lines? Yeah. I have LJNs. Which camera? You're this camera. I have uh, LJNs. I have Funko Pop. I have all of them. But my dad, I just went home this weekend because I sent my kids up there. And I went to pick up my kids, and my dad goes, hey, I, uh, I got you something because you collect wrestlers. And he hands me this little macho man, uh, like Masters of the Universe yeah. thing. Oh, my God. It's so great. Bro, I just want to play with I, it. I, I bought this. There's a whole stack of toys here that I'm trying to, like, box and, like, collect. But there's a Stone Cold Steve Austin Ghostbusters edition. Oh, my Lord. So he's got a proton pack, got a little suit that says awesome. Like, that's awesome to me. Like, it's just, like, super fun. And, like, I I have very specific photos or before this, maybe, like, it was five action figures. Yeah. I look over and I'm like, yeah, I love Stone Cold. That's why he's on the wall. Oh, Kane of Mankind. That's why he's yeah. on the wall. And that's how you need it that motivation. <laughs> like, your little man cave there. Yeah. That's your sanctuary. You get yeah. to go there and go, this is where I'm going to zone out. This is where – this yeah. is – my space there's three girls somewhere in the house running around but this is dad's space that's right and and they, they try to creep in here but i do my best to uh not let them i wish i could turn the camera and show you everything else 
Like it's it's a cool mega. There's couches and stuff. It's it's all still manly, and I'm hoping it stays that way. Although, where are you located? Uh, I'm in upstate New York. Oh, that, whereabouts in upstate? Uh, like Albany area. Oh, that I definitely will make a point to join in on that uh, the soccer game at one point, <laughs> and also I want to see a tour of your main. I have this weird thing where I'm obsessed with how people display their stuff and just like their area. So Albany isn't that far from me, and I tell kids this at the merch table all the time. I like having these little interactions. Yeah, where. If they boo me, I used to have a Ouija board also, and I would literally be in nightmares with these children. <laughs> and I would tell them sometimes, they're like, boo, you suck. And I was like, do you enjoy the house you live in? Or they go, <laughs> I live in an apartment. i will be like, wouldn't it be a shame if that burnt down? And then they'll tell me, they're like, you don't know where I live. And I'll reply, you don't know how much time I have. <laughs> Oh man, what what a so great! So I work night. one to ten a.m. I'll shoot yeah. down to Albany when borders open at some point to see this or do a pickup game. Yeah, you'll dri- you'll you'll just zip right up the Northway. I don't understand any of the interstates and stuff. I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in New York yet, but my buddy Space Monkey has hit two deers one year apart to the day and near hour in upstate New York. Yes, yes, they're everywhere up there. I I went to. Plattsburgh, New York for college for uh, uh, half a year to play basketball, which is like right on the border up there by Canada. And, uh, and when I would drive from there to where I was born, uh, like in the Lake George area, I drive up and there were a ton of deer ton. So uh, stay safe, stay safe, stay strong. Anyways, uh, Wow, geez, we could probably talk all night. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even touch on our toys yet. <laughs> Dude, that's part two. That's yeah, part two. Part two or concerts. I my whole man cave, my whole, my whole bar down here from, well, you, you can't see it, but the whole other <laughs> side of the walls, um, are all framed Pearl Jam posters. So I don't know if you're a Pearl Ooh. Jam fan, but they're all framed. There's a couple Foo Fighters, a couple other concerts I've been to, um. See, that's what I love, though. I love people talking about what they love and what they're passionate right. about because that genuineness in it. There's a lot of people that don't have passion or don't think that their weird interests or hobby are interesting because they're not a pro wrestler or they're yeah. not doing this. It's like, oh, you enjoy gardening? That's cool. I don't understand anything to do with gardening, but you explaining it to me, it's awesome. You going to Pearl Jam and Foo Fighters concerts, the fact that you have that frame. I am not a huge music guy. Yeah. I just enjoy music. But, like, that's that's awesome to me where it's you talking. Like, I'm now noticing that that's a Liverpool Football Club uh, yes. champions banner on your side yes. where it's like, yep, that's so cool. My brother my brother bought me this uh, not too long ago, and I got to uh. date it down there. And it, it's funny because this COVID has really, like, so I I think I get this from my dad. But I collect wooden pallets that people put on the side of the road okay. to throw out. You know, yeah. that come in packaging, wooden pallets. And at my old house, I used to just collect them. And I was like, I'm going to do something with them. And I never did. I ended up just burning them. And since this COVID started, I now have taken the pallets. And I don't – you probably can't see. They're actually all clean now. But I've been, like, <laughs> building things with them. I made my wife this cool shelf. That I sta- sanded and stained, and, and she's gonna Ooh. hang it upstairs somewhere. I I built a new right here where the liquor bottles are. Has a whole new shelf. It's in the garage right now. The staining is drying, but I, I picked up that new hobby of I finally decided to sand and stain and, and do all this stuff. And it's, it's I love all those strange. DIY projects with the pallets and stuff. I'll always see they so, make good and, garden beds too. Yeah. And I'm going to do 100. shit like that too. Anytime I, I see people that are good with their hands or stuff. Like I'm a creative person. I'll entertain you. We can talk. I've done stand up comedy. Like I, very much like right now, this is just a genuine conversation. I'm yeah. kind of interviewing you now. Yeah. I where it's, it. That stuff, though, because also your fan base now gets to know you more instead of there's never just a guy holding the microphone. There are two humans that 
I Makes I get sense. the benefit anytime someone's creative or good with their hands or cars or whatever. I'm jealous because I'm like, wow, you're more manly than I am. And sometimes it's a woman saying that where I'm not saying it in a derogatory way. It's me going like, oh, I am a toddler. I get <laughs> I get paid and people laugh when I say things or when I pretend to fight people where it's like you – I, I know how to check my oil. I do not know how to change my oil. Yeah, me either. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I'm super jealous of people good with their hands. That's what I should have gone to school for. Anyways, Holden, <laughs> it was a phenomenal night, and we can definitely do it again. Someone <laughs> you can be on any time. Your car yeah. launch. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, geez, we already did the – I don't even know how to end the <laughs> show now that we've already we've done the – uh, just yeah. go, go to Holden Pro on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. And uh, I'll see you around. So thank you. Hell yeah. I'll make sure to visit Albany. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> no problem. Have a good night. You too. Excellent. Awesome. Phenomenal. Great job, Vanessa. Uh, this guy is called the Standing Streamer. <laughs> Wrestling with Regret, and you're watching Putting You Over.